good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Karl Ernst Forchert, and I will talk to you about an open and secure platform for in car applications. Um, I'm lucky to see that there are also some ladies here in the audience. I'm from automotive industry, and uh, there it's a little bit old school still today. And so I'm very happy to see also some female experts here. Um, what we are doing as eVector and I myself, we are doing some things in terms of innovation management, especially writing scenarios. And we did so 15 years ago, and that was the origin of the idea to do something with mobility and inform information technologies. Um, what was the origin of the idea? Um, one mega trend we found out was we will have some access and availability to mobility everywhere, everywhere all around the world. That's not very interesting, but uh, we found out it's not the vehicle, it's mobility itself. So that was mentioned by VUC. We, are, we have to change our mind from the car to access to mobility. We did this scenario analysis with many, many experts and in seven fields of operation, from materials, from vehicle concepts, from manufacturing technologies, from production organization, mobility demands, and of course, societal issues. And because of different societal issues, all the trends did not mix up in one central point, they are divided into different areas. And when you look at this land map, map um, then you see trends which are close together, they are also in the graphic close together, and trends who are different in their uh, content, they uh, are located in different edges. So, as engineers, we found out innovative materials go along with personal safety, that's okay. Also with convenient and comfort for the driver and the passengers. And on the other hand, the customer wants flexibility and the flexibility is provided by the manufacturing system. Um, at the first, very first um, trend, we uh, discovered the Xtronic, the Mechatronic, the Electronic, IT, trend of uh, cars that was easy to understand. What we didn't understand at once was how do these both trends, mobility and information-driven society, go together. That's very obvious that these are the mega trends, but in 2003, we had no idea at that point. Um, information in a global society with local orientation. That was the trend, and we researched and we thought about how does it come together. In 2011, we made another scenario analysis with other experts from manufacturing and car development, and um, we considered car body, new propulsion systems, new materials, new planning processes, new business models. And there we find out some clusters of scenarios. And the first was very in common. We have evolutionary developed vehicles in conventional production systems. And there are also some subclusters, individualized cars, and cars which look from the outer body all the same. They are only differentiated with end of line customization. Then we have totally different vehicles, different vehicles built in new structures of production systems with new powertrains, electric drive, hybrid drives, other uh, trends, and we will come to that uh, later. And these two areas are separated by river, and there are only few transferring scenarios leading us from today to these blue ones which are represented by the future. And in the end, we also have some third scenario that has something to do with textile manufacturing technologies and with generative um, uh, manufacturing issues. 
Um, that's very promising in case of 3D printing, 3D generating processing. But I want to um, focus on a very common um, scenario, which is uh, very liked by the automotive engineers, because they said, we do not have to provide for each customer his own body shape. That was a trend for the last 10 years. We have to provide for every market niche his own car. This is a totally opposite scenario. We produce the car in the same shape, and it's only differentiated by end-of-line customization. Like the iPhone. The iPhone comes up with 16, 32, and uh, 64 gigabytes of memory. That's it, and it's individualized by the customer. And that was the beginning of the story, changing from the bodywork of a car to what is in the car. Um, another aspect is we have some different innovation cycles and usage cycles. We mentioned it already. A car is developed within a period of seven years and it's used by 10 years. And the electronics are in a very um, um, fewer um, in a very um, uh, tight um, um, uh, cycle developed every two years, like phones every 18 months, for example. And if you buy a car, a new car, quite new used car, four years, it's from the electronic standards, quite old. So how can we overcome this topic? So the mechanical car is quite new. Can we bring in some box which renews the electronic ability of a car. And that was the start of the idea. We have some helpers in the car, the anti-blocking system and driver assistance, parking assistant auto till up to autonomous driving. Uh, that's in the scale of the car, the entire car manufacturer uh, sector. No one uh, can uh, go into that part. On the other hand, we had at that time some infotainment issues, navigation systems, all the stuff. And the question was, is there some other room between? We had it before, two levels of applications, the infotainment applications and the really serious. And we already had some kind of these applications. Uh, it has something to do with customizing the car, or with autonomous driving abilities, or with safety things for the passenger, for example. Another safety thing is to recognize, is the driver able to car the right in a proper way um, when the um, responsibility will be handed over to the driver, if the technique will have some problems. There will be some room of innovation, and that was the starting point. So, we together uh, thought about uh, some applications. First one was a safety thing. We had one guy in our uh, group. Uh, he's dealing with active safety. He deals with airbags. And the airbags starts, ignites always at the same point when the crash is detected. And when a big guy sits behind the steering wheel, it's a totally different situation when a, a slim and small lady sits behind this uh, steering wheel. So if you know the weight and the measures of the people sitting behind the uh, uh, steering wheel, then you can optimize the ignition time of this airbag. You can imagine it's an application which is very carefully because it's safeguarded by the car manufacturer. Other applications are also um, um, thinkable. Uh, you go to the eastern neighbors, uh, theft uh, um, and vandalism of cars is in common. If you have some um, uh, applications functioned um, with uh, GPS and with some automatic generated video and uh, picture shooting, then you might grab um, uh, the, uh, the third party guys. And other applications are available, but at that time we recognized we need some kind of data protection, for example, against abuse, against in intrusion from third-party guys. This IT has to be reliability, 
and it has to be vehicle variety variable because each car has its own CAN bus standard and we have to um, go into these functions. And this interface has to be labeled for a certain time of usage period. Um, we talked about some mirror link um, functions like before. You can see, you can use the keys of the steering wheel with some kind of application, but what to do if we want some more information from the car? Um, we had a list of applications. In our group, we sorted out of about 50 applications. The first has something to do with safety, security, and health of the uh, drivers. Another group of ability, uh, applications might be comfort applications, navigation, communication, things. Efficiency of driving, going through urban areas with let off a lot of traffic jams, even for commercial users. Regulation, we mentioned the uh, electronic logbook. Connectivity is a big area of application. Services for the car fleet provider. Oh, your car needs to have an update of firmware. You have to go back to the workshop, but can we do this over the air, for example? And one important thing is, of course, business integration. If you are a member of a fleet uh, with uh, craftsmen, servicemen going across uh, the urban area, then you easily can integrate them um, with the help of traffic, gem recognition, and driving uh, conditions, and all these informations. And of course, we are looking for new markets, especially, for example, also in the cargo bike, three- and two-wheelers. We are not dedicated only to the four-wheeler, to an um, ordinary car. We also look at three-wheelers and two-wheelers, and especially here in Berlin, many cargo bikes are growing, growing, and they also need some help by information. Yeah, just some applications. We sorted them uh, by customer needs, by business expectations. Is there a business potential? Like the predecessor told, e-logbook has some business expectations. And on the other hand, we sorted out the level of needed security. For example, if we dimension the ignition point of the airbag, then it's for sure the security level has something to do which treat, treats the body itself, so it has to be life safe. So some other really um, safety and security um, uh, requirements to the app. The mobility manager, the integration into other office uh, functions, it has to be at least contract safe. Eco router, which helps you going easily through town, it's a comfort function. We also talked about pay-as-you-drive boxes, insurance companies. This has to be at least authorities safe, so to say. Connectivity things, Peter Conradi will talk about at that. It has also to be authorities safe. What does it mean, Cloud Atlas? Services, when there is an update to the brake system, it can be provided uh, by a firmware update. Of course, it's life. it has to be life safe. It has to be um, follow the higher levels of ASIL level at least three. It's in the automotive language. The digital logbook, it's not that safe, but you can imagine that the tax offices has some um, requirements how to do this so that it can't be manipulated by individuals. And so we clustered and collected some kind of these ideas and um, therefore we created a list of table which kind of technical requirements do we need to provide some kind of these applications. We need some kind of uh, telematics, we need some kind of um, interfaces, USB, near-field communication, all this stuff. Um, CAN bus access, it's an important thing. We discussed it already. And 
also with some kind of what kind of computing capacity and big data processing has to be needed in the box or in the environment of this thing. We collected them and we listed that, and that was the starting point of our consortium of different of seven different project partners here in Berlin, and we are now in the stage of developing this kind of box. The box. It's a box which collects the data from the CAN bus, which collects the data from other sensors. The box maybe itself has some sensors, at least the GPS sensors, and will have, have some access to other HMI devices in the car, your smartphone and what, whatever you want, Wi-Fi and all this. Um, this box has the ability to compute for itself the signals, is able to buffer some signals because if we are in um, some areas where the um, 3G or 2G connection is not available, we need some buffers uh, of, uh, for secure transferring the data. And of course, in the back end, we need some server infrastructure where we collect the data and provide them for different business applications. The service provider, the mobility provider, app developers, and other community members are part of that. Which is in common of all of these three items, we need some IT security safety uh, level for safe operation of these mobility oriented application. But first I want to hand over to Peter. Um, he is one part of the member, he is member of the Steinweiss Institute of Electromobility and Information and he got an idea in our consortium, and he will explain us. Thank you, Kai. And, uh, yes, thank you for, um, um, for the chance talking a little bit to you. Um, <clears throat> the, until now, the talk uh, was concerning more, more this market aspect or this technology, this big technology view. But I know that you are a community of uh, people are concentrating on one operation system on one on, on a kind of smartphone. So my my task will be coming closer to you, not too close, and I'm going down here. Um, coming closer to you and try to get get you a little bit involved in into um, into our ideas. So my um, um, my. Uh, um, um, I'm presenting the, the second part here, and I'm talking more or less uh, about um, the kind, uh, the art of of programming um, Android uh, customer devices, and this doing this in a in an automotive environment. That's my that's my job for today, and. Um, Oh, um, as you see here, um, uh, the um, as you see in the streets, the cars are changing. The, the, the cars are getting more modern. We have hundreds of ECUs, uh, or in, in other words, of small computers in a car, and um, cars are getting uh, are having more and more electronics and. Um, we are uh, we are living in a in a in a technical environment, which is really amazing for technical freaks. But um, but it's it's a big change, and we in Germany have the position that we are the, we have this market of kind of intelligent cars worldwide. So if you're going to other countries um, in the world, you see you, you see this. Um, uh, uh, this German car thinking there. So we, in Germany, we have this electronics, we have this, uh, the, cap the capability of a high um, sophisticated and high um, um, uh, derived car technology. But how about the connection to our private mobile devices? And so, uh, a few days before, when I started preparation of this talk, I looked to Android Auto. And I thought about, we are here in Germany, um, the, um, 
the most uh, famous car builder in the world, but we are not having Android Auto yet. So what is the situation in this market? And then I tried to concentrate a little bit of what is happening in the scene um, between this modern luxus cars, what we are producing very fine in Germany, Mercedes, BMW, uh, Volkswagen, and the possibility of using smartphones there. This is my, um, um, uh, my belief is that the integration of um, smartphone um, technology in the cars, it's quite complicated. And I will tell you why. We um, have this um, uh, both, both worldwide operating um, smartphone uh, types or smartphone vendors, um, Apple and the Android world, um, uh, were offering car-related APIs. That's, we are, that's I'm talking today. So um, if you are getting back in a role of a typical Android programmer, then you have um, in your environment, in your, in your SDK, in your IDE, you have this smartphone as a destination device and you are developing on, on a PC or whatever, wherever, developing your smartphone software, believe that you are using Android 5 for this. That's the basic position what you're currently doing. How you can connect your software with the car. How we can do this? The answer could be that um, we are that Android uh, gets a new API, uh, also, uh, um, um, deploys a new API called Android Auto, not available in Germany, as I said, and so on. And then you have this library. You can include it, but it's useless. Because if you are, uh, if you are um, compiling something in, uh, um, in your Android environment and you have no car, then you cannot um, use this Android Auto API. So you need a car. And if you have a car, and this car is supporting Android Auto, um, as many cars today are doing, except in Germany, um, but it's coming soon, I, I believe, um, then you have more or less three things in the car. You have, you have a microphone. That's not the microphone of your smartphone. It's a kind of car microphone, wherever this is. You have, um, a, you have some very small switches in your steering wheel, that's clear, B because nobody wants you to, to touch your smartphone while driving. And you have a monitor. This is a part of a car somewhere, it's a small monitor, and this um, API gives you the possibility to connect over USB um, to this car somehow. And your libraries are enabling um, you this kind of working. And we are speaking later about what you are programming. Priorly is, uh, or more or less, I want to speak about the, the system before, um, before we are going into what can we do with this environment. But this, what you see here, this is set by the provider Android for using libraries, building car apps. And afterwards, the app is not running in your smartphone. It's, yeah, it's running in smartphone, maybe, but it's also mirrored or processed in the car, in the HMI, and displayed probably in the uh, HMI monitor itself. That's clear. That's a similar technology, I believe, uh, as we have with um, Mirrorlink or other um, technologies, very famous in last last time. But what 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 do you want to do there? 
if you want to program a navigator, it's no problem. Um, your smartphone has uh, GPS, and then you can build your routing and you are ready. You don't need uh, anything out of the car. But as I told you, or as we discussed before, the car itself has hundreds of processors, hundreds of processors in the car. Why losing this intelligence? Why, can, why, why can, cannot, can we not connect this to the CAN bus, for example, or to other buses? Let me paint this here. Okay, now you see a CAN, but how to connect to the CAN? And if we are working on CAN bus technologies, then we see that even different series of cars of the same uh, developer have different CAN IDs. So nobody um, can develop, make a, make a reliable development of information coming uh, out of the car if we don't need, a, uh, if we don't have a standard coming over to say this CAN bus ID means always the, uh, the odometer or whatever. Um, and we don't have this. So, we, so Android Auto in this case cannot really give you an access to the inner electronics. Or could, could yes, could or could not. What will happen? Android Auto is working with let's say 20 um, OEMs, so developers or uh, um, producers of, of cars worldwide, but will they, will they give you uh, an access to um, the, um, the uh, CAN bus, yes or not? No? Who says yes? No. Nobody. Okay, so not. But in this case, we are losing this kind of mega computing with hundreds of, of ECUs in, in the car. Whatever they are doing, we cannot use it. So we are lost in space a little bit. And what we did in our consortium, it's, um, yeah, we are working within two or three years on this idea and getting more and more involved into this technology. We defined a kind of new computer and it looks like a black box. It looks like one of the ECUs in the car looks the same, but has another task, has another uh, work to do. It's not the work of um, getting something to do in the car for, um, for um, braking or ever. It's more to, uh, to use this telematic task to transfer information from the car to the internet. And my idea is to let such a box communicate with a smartphone. And develop a kind of CAN API. Let a pure Linux, Linux run on this device and giving the community the chance of transferring information from the CAN bus yeah, to a maybe self-developed Linux system on board yeah, in combination with communication to, the, to an internet server. That's what, what this picture tries to express. Um, this is complicated because if you write some information to the CAN bus, then it could happen that your car is 
um, uh, is processing fail, fail functions and running against the wall or whatever could happen. It's, uh, in any case, it's very dangerous to communicate with this complicated inner electronic system. So we need something, something like um, big effort on the safety side, on, on, the, on the security, not, not safety, on security, because safety is more or less a real damage prevention. Security is what we, are, what, what we need to um, prevent our system that it's doing something wrong on the canvas side. That's what we are doing. Um, currently, we cannot give you um, too much details on this because security always needs very much time, needs, um, uh, um, uh, needs a big, uh, deeper knowledge of the, um, of the lower iso OSI levels and so on. But we can um, use today, our project is, uh, let's say, running another year and during this year, we try to finalize this architecture to uh, find, um, yeah, let's say, a good, a good community communication with people um, working on the smartphone side. So that's why we are here. Um, that's what we have in mind. To Starting today, the discussion with the Android community to ask, what are your needs? What do you want from the car? How we can help you? Do you want to write native software on a Linux app there? And let this app communicate with your app in the smartphone? Is that is this what you need? Do you want to access the CAN bus? What kind of information do you need from the CAN bus? Do you need only the speed? You can calculate the speed yourself with your GPS um, uh, receiver. W what do you need? And w um, where, um, where is this going to? Where, um, and in which point, and uh, Kai Ernst um, um, has this time, timeline, has this timeline there, what is happening in five years? Um, what, 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 what is happening with this hundreds of ECUs in the car, yeah, which are working isolated from our smartphone, and can we have su uh, such a kind of mediator, like a Linux system in between, helping us to cross over? These are our current questions. And, yeah, we are um, currently developing uh, a few um, um, programs, a few apps on the box and on Android to show that our system is running. And afterwards, we, we are ready to go into the community and, um, let, uh, and uh, going to the B2C market or the B2B market to um, let the community come closer to our idea. Okay. Um, this is a um, list of apps which are under thought at the moment, which we can uh, uh, give to the market um, if we are using uh, um, our system in a kind of cooperation. Um, and let me come to a short conclusion. Um, the last point is uh, most important. So we, we are planning the, availab uh, the availability of this Linux box for automotive purposes with an, with an E1, uh, uh, wie sagt man, Zulassung, um, for um, uh, the middle of 2016, at the least of the end of 2016. And we will try to realize a kind of proxy function going with your smartphone to our box and from the box to the internet if you want to do so. And we have this um, CANDB, yeah, where you can, uh, um, dependent on the car model where you're working on, you can get some help from us and so on. 
Okay, at this point I will hand over to Kai Ernst again. And who, who, who are we? Um, it's a consortium of mainly Berlin Brandenburg partners. Peter is coming from Darmstadt. Um, starting point was uh, Adomite Julius. He's doing the airbag uh, issues. MBDS is doing pro programming embedded system. And a real important part plays the Freie Universität in Berlin. Uh, Volker Roth, he is the professor for secure identity. That's a big issue. I don't want to go deeply, but it's obvious uh, that we need some information security in both uh, direction, uh, not to harm the car, but also not to harm the user, because the user is driving, producing lots of data. What will be done with the data? Um, do we allow Google or other communities to use the data? That's a big question. And other companies, and, uh, um, and Steinbach, you, we already uh, mentioned. And why we're here? We are here to ask the community. It's the first time for our uh, um, uh, project uh, committee to uh, go out about to invite you to test the system, to invite you to exchange ideas. Maybe you have some ideas you want to bring in and demonstrate some uh, issues. We, as eight people, we gathered. 50 ideas of applications. So you might also have some ideas and, the, and to provide a playground for uh, testing, demonstration of these kind of uh, ideas and maybe in the end providing solutions where you can make some business and that's all a part of a slightly change of the users of mobility. I mentioned before, another scenario is left. It's called the Samsung car scenario. It's not because um, um, of the company Samsung. It's just the answer of the question, what might happen if a big electronic company, enterprise, goes into the mobility business and senses a lot of business? How, do they, how will they do that? The scenario comes from the computer. It's generated by algorithms and workshop experts from Volkswagen and from KUKA and from other German companies uh, interpreted it, and that was the result. So the car is just um, a, a, a carrier of new information communication functions with a lots of assistant um, uh, function till the autopilot uh, um, function, of course. Lots of mechanical stuff I want to skip. And sustainability of the car is important. And this car is developed in a very short time and with a drastic reduction of the time to market to avoid under misunderstandings how the market goes. And that's some similarity to the telecommunication market where uh, mobile phones, smartphones are in very, very short cycles uh, produced, developed uh, for the market. And we can imagine that this type of car has totally different quality requirements, issues, than an Audi A6 or some t typical German car. This car has new functions in new information and communication things, and that's your, fu your future. And that was derived four years ago. Today we know Google and Apple is doing some business in this case. It comes true, and that's our, our field of business. Yes, thank you for your attention. Uh